everyone. Welcome, dear viewers, to a special edition uh, covering uh, today's first convention of the National Alliance for Civil and Development Work attended by President Abdel Fattah el-Sisi. The National Alliance's first convention is also attended by Prime Minister Mustafa Medbouli and several ministers and senior state officials. The non-governmental organization plays a great role in implementing uh, state social protection plans and is a cornerstone in the state's development process nationwide given its ability to offer qualified assistance to target households and categories in speed and high efficiency. Since launching its activities in March 2022, the Alliance has worked in integration with both the government and the private sector to ensure society development is provided to citizens across the nation. At the beginning of the convention, a documentary explained how the Alliance, which comprises more than 30 civil aviation civil society organizations rather has been helping in offering health care and food needs to millions of households in different governorates. Uh, in her address to the convention, the Secretary of the Board of Trustees, Dr. Noah Talat, said since last March, the Alliance's constituent organizations have conducted tours to hold dialogue with concerned societies nationwide over best ways to ensure extended coverage for beneficiaries in the most deserving areas. Welcome back, and uh, to shed more light on this uh, topic, we are glad to be joined over the phone by Dr. Saeed Saad. He is a professor of political uh, sociology. Good afternoon, Dr. Saad. Good evening, and uh, good uh, day, and happy new year. Happy new year to you, sir. Well, uh, Dr. Saad, uh, President Abdel Fattah el-Sisi witnessed uh, today the first convention of the National Alliance for Civil Development Work. Now, the uh, Alliance's uh, first convention is also attended by the Prime Minister and uh, several uh, senior officials. How do you see the significance of uh, this very important event? This is again an uh, uh, official recognition of the Qaeda government of the importance of NGOs, voluntary organizations, civil society work in meeting the needs of society. In fact, President Sisi announced today and you know, asserted that uh, uh, civil society is very important in doing the job that the government cannot do because they exist in, places, in many parts of the country, in many uh, 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 areas of society, where the government and its bureaucracy may not be able to reach. And so it is very important. We have, many, uh, we have a long history of civil society work. This is not a convention or a recent development as in Egypt. This is a very ancient uh, tradition in society. And it is very important that, that we do a lot of things to try here. Things uh, the government is big. For example, to deal with environment, they deal with um, people with special needs, they deal with uh, uh, helping uh, uh, single mothers, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, family headed uh, 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 by women, uh, and, and we have almost 35 percent of families in Egypt are headed by women, and so they are very important. In, uh, in, in, in reducing the impact of the current economic crisis. Uh, what we should do and what we expect is that we should provide people with solutions. What can they do to reduce the uh, consumption? How can they rationalize the consumption during this difficult economic period? Uh, how to cook properly? How to save uh, uh, the food that you have from being wasted? Uh, maybe 30 to 40 percent of the food is wasted because you buy a lot of big quantities and you don't use it. And so it ends up in the garbage. Whereas you could have saved money, you could also have helped others, you could have, uh, and, uh, uh, you could have also helped in cutting down the, the inflation in the country uh, by people buying, over buying what they want, over consumption. So this can be uh, uh, an important for job for the NGOs and also for the national media in general. Uh, so this is very important that uh, we have this uh, uh, conference. 
Yes, well, uh, Dr. Saeed, uh, since uh, launching its activities in March 2022, the Alliance has worked in integration with uh, both the government and the private sector to ensure society development is provided uh, to citizens across the nation. Now, how do you see the significance of this kind of integration? As you know, 2023 was declared the year of civil society in Egypt. Like, uh, you know, we had uh, President Sisi every now and then would dedicate a year to a particular social group. We had uh, a year for the special people with special needs, or one also for women, and this year is also for civil society. And that should also be uh, 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 an attraction to foreign donors who also contribute to uh, the budget of many of the NGOs locally. And so uh, uh, this conference is important. It's a message to the international community. It's a message to the uh, society that we support, the government supports civil society, not in fact civil society. On the contrary, it is an alliance. It is uh, uh, supporting and, uh, and partners with the civil society in dealing with the issues and problems facing Egyptian society. So this is a very important message for all, uh, uh, anybody who is concerned. Right. Well, uh, Sir President Abdel Fattah el-Sisi uh, said that all humanitarian and charity societies and entities are appreciated for providing aid in fields that cannot be completely covered by the government. How do you comment on the President's words? Uh, of course, uh, the, this is the NGO, uh, as I mentioned, in the three areas that uh, the government cannot access. We have many big wins, hamlets, uh, uh, people marginalized, uh, uh, that official programs cannot reach. Here, the NGOs would, do, would fill the gap. We would go for areas, for example, we have, uh, who have been, uh, you know, uh, NGOs working with garbage collectors and their problems. And mm -hmm. uh, this is a group that's uh, very important, but uh, sometimes, uh, you know, outside the sphere of the official government institutions. So, NGOs in this case could be uh, serving directly in the area. They know the people in the area. They provide the services that they wanted. And so they are important. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and so what you said uh, is correct. This is what really the function of NGOs, filling the gaps where the government is missing. Right. Uh, well, uh, Dr. Saeed, uh, the president also in his speech hailed the alliance's great and well-coordinated role in achieving sustainable social and economic development. Uh, how do you see this and how do you, th you see the role of uh, these societies in achieving uh, sustainable social and economic development in Egypt? They need to coordinate because they work in several sectors. Sometimes there is repetition, uh, recurrence of the same uh, activity. Uh, so if they coordinate, where do you go? For example, you have some organizations that deal with uh, people who, you know, with special needs. Uh, we have a national organization for people with special needs. But we have also many NGOs in certain areas targeting certain uh, uh, parts of the, the, the country, uh, mm -hmm. certain governorates, certain villages. Uh, they need to coordinate what they do so that there is no replication or that uh, they would learn from each other. This meeting also allows all those NGOs to sit together and talk with each other, uh, learn from each other. Where are the difficulties? Where are the, uh, uh, the, the right steps? What should be done? What should not be done? Uh, this is very important because sometimes those NGOs may be working in isolation from each other. But when they sit together, they would share, they, they are networking, and so they would learn. So this is very important that we have an alliance and a meeting of this kind in which NGOs would meet and coordinate and discuss and uh, interact and network. 
Yes, uh, well, uh, sir, uh, the president also said the state is keen on cooperating with the National Alliance to support development, especially in the field of agriculture and helping in launching land reclamation projects by junior farmers. What's the role expected of uh, civil society organizations in the field of agriculture and uh, land reclamation projects, in your opinion? Land reclamation is very important. Uh, we have modern techniques in land reclamation, and as you know, the, the country uh, has been launching a huge project now. Uh, uh, in the desert reclamation, like in Costa, for example. What is needed is that the importation of more uh, advanced uh, land reclamation uh, tractors and machines. Uh, in harvesting and also in planting seeds uh, like wheat. And I understand that uh, some countries are very uh, advanced uh, and uh, they cooperate with Egypt. I think Finland is one of them uh, that has a, a, a lot of cooperation uh, and uh, maybe more is expected. I think there is a, a Finnish business delegation maybe visiting Egypt next week and they may be helping, cooperating with some of the companies and NGOs, and that would also be helping uh, land reclamation. Egypt can really achieve a lot of, of productivity in, uh, in uh, some of those lands that are being reclaimed, and that would be also serving uh, the objectives of COP27 that was uh, uh, held at Cairo in, in Hamishik last November. And so this is also very important. And mm -hmm. we all can help a lot in, uh, in helping and assisting uh, farmers in getting better and higher yields from the uh, plantation than the usual species of, uh, 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 you know, not very advanced. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, uh, Dr. Saeed, uh, how do you see the importance of uh, supporting less privileged groups and uh, the importance of the role of civil society uh, institutions in enhancing the government's efforts to support the target groups of citizens? Uh, th this is important. As I mentioned, the meeting today would allow NGOs to interact with each other, but also interact with the government. So that there is dialogue, uh, there is understanding, there is uh, 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 discussion of what should be done, where should we go, uh, which area that needs more uh, attention than uh, as Upper Egypt is very much in need because the, the highest poverty rate is in Upper Egypt in the villages of Upper Egypt. And that's why it's important that you have uh, 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 the dialogue between the government and NGOs starts with those areas. Also, the, the issue, which I think President Putin raises all the time, and many previous leaders, the issue of overpopulation. NGOs should be playing a big role in this issue. We should take the, the discourse and messages of uh, the Ministry of Health regarding two children per family to the villages, to the hamlets. And, and, and because they are there and they meet, meet with people, interact with people, that is very important. We have many women in NGOs. We should also coordinate with the National Council for Women, uh, uh, who are always uh, working with poor women in, uh, in the rural areas and quite a settlement. So this is very important that there is interaction and discussion and a regular Meeting. I don't want it to be only one year event and, and bye bye. No, it should be a regular consultation between the NGOs and the government agencies dealing with social development and social protection. Right. Well, I would like to thank you so much, uh, Dr. Saeed Saad, uh, Professor of uh, Political Sociology. Many thanks for your valuable insights, sir. And the dear viewers, now we go back to our special reports. Minister of Finance uh, Mohamed Maid stated on Wednesday that Egypt's accession to the membership of the Africa Finance Corporation contributes to opening up uh, broad horizons. More details in this report.
Minister of Finance Mohamed Maid stated that Egypt's accession to the membership of the Africa Finance Corporation contributes to opening up broad horizons for investment in infrastructure projects, heavy industries, communications, transportation, logistics, and green transformation. Maid added that the corporation contributes to providing some financing for public and private sector projects in a way that helps in achieving development goals and enhancing the capabilities of the Egyptian economy for sustainable growth through green projects. The minister noted that all the House of Representatives approved Egypt's accession to the Africa Finance Corporation. Egypt is continuing efforts to stimulate public and private investments. This is in order to help improve standard of living of citizens and improve the services provided to them by strengthening cooperation with all regional partners, especially in light of unprecedented global economic challenges. He further explained that Egypt's accession to the Africa Finance Corporation corresponds with the country's goal by increasing green investment to 50% in the fiscal year 2024-2025 budget through the expansion of clean energy projects, smart transportation, and other developmental and national projects. This is besides giving more space to the private sector so that it can lead economic growth that is rich in jobs, especially in light of the government's efforts to simulate investment which was reflected in the state ownership policy document and golden license and others. Welcome back, dear viewers, and stay with our special reports. Uh, in an effort to transform into a renewable energy hub, the Egyptian government has allocated sizable state-owned land to the development of green hydrogen and renewable energy. More details in this report. With a view to strengthening cross-border partnerships and commercial ties, U.S. President Joe Biden announced over $15 billion in bilateral trade and investment deals between the U.S. and Africa. These commitments target strategic areas of shared interest, including sustainable energy, health care, agriculture, digital connectivity, infrastructure, and finance. In addition, the Export-Import Bank of the United States signed a $500 million memorandum of understanding with the African Export-Import Bank to enhance its commercial ties on the continent, as well as another $500 million MOU with the Africa Finance Corporation to promote U.S.-Africa trade and support financing for trade-enabling projects. In recent years, U.S. foreign policy in Africa has shifted towards prioritizing private sector development projects with high financial returns rather than development aid, as well as significantly expanding U.S. financing capacity. According to the White House, the U.S. has helped close over 800 trade and investment deals across 47 African countries since 2021 representing a combined estimated value of over $18 billion. Additional outcomes from the deal include an MOU signed between the U.S. Trade Representatives and African Continental Free Trade Area, first regional compacts signed between the Millennium Challenge Corporation and governments of Benin and Niger to support regional trade and integration. President Biden's launch of a new initiative, Digital Transformation with Africa to Increase Digital Access and literacy in Africa and an announced from a U.S. International Development Finance Corporation of $369 million in new investments in food security, renewable energy infrastructure and health projects across the continent. Ladies and gentlemen, that brings us to the end of this uh, special edition uh, uh, covering the uh, events of uh, the day. Uh, many thanks for watching. This is Naveen Ramzi signing off. unhappy goddess, for I can no longer find my temple in this chaos of rock. It has disappeared, swallowed up by your waters. No, it has been saved. 
¿no? And you, who hear my voice, you who have come from the four corners of the earth to admire Egypt's treasure, which a French sailor once called 